Ah, ça, ça. Mike's Daily Podcast. FF episode 1388-1388. And Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Pod Castro Valley Mont. Today, Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, Bison Bentley. Plus, we bring you the segment, the Michaelopedia Insanica. We got a bunch of crazy news stories to get to today in this crazy world. Mike's Daily Podcast. And yes, we have a cool podcast picture I will tell you about very soon. But first, I have to sing this song. Mike's Daily Podcast. Yesterday was an interesting day. Did you go and get your Slurpee? And after you drank that and got all those calories, you had to do a burpee because those are what help get rid of those calories. And then you can date a girl named Mallory. Mallory, wasn't that the the name of the sister on Facts of Life? Mike's Daily Podcast. No, Family Ties. That's right. Was it Justine Bateman? That her name was Mallory. Mike's. So I know Daily this guy at work podcast. who has a theory on yeah. time traveling tourists. They go back in time and they, they look at the past and when we see them, we're like, what? Well, we take pictures of them and apparently we took pictures of them back in the 30s and 40s and 50s and those pictures are posted when you do a Google search for time travelers. Time traveling photos. Look who just walked in. Hello, Michael Matthew. It's Madame Rudebega. I have been alive for thousands of years. And I've met some time travelers. Ooh. What are they like? Very snooty. They're snooty? Yes, Michael Matthew, because all they care about is looking at things in the past. Mm-hmm. What do they what do they look at? Look who else walked in. Hello there, Mike. This is Valentino, the backing attendant. And it's Vice of Bentley. Do you know that? Hey, guys. Welcome to the conversation. Yeah, so uh, what do time traveling tourists, yikes, look at Madame Rutabaga Day? Well, they are very interested in their relatives and their ancestors. And they want to talk to them and see if they have any ailments so that they have to worry about that in the future. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. This one guy I work with, he showed me a picture of someone who apparently was taking a picture. And here's today's podcast picture. Of their young self. But that's not what the podcast picture is. It's actually of water. No, it's not. Wa- I have a lot of pictures of water. I know in my podcast pictures. If you'd like to see a picture of water, not a picture of water. Wait, what? Uh, I'm getting all word tied. So if you want to see one of the many pictures I have of water, why you can go to Mike's daily podcast.com. But in this picture, it's fish swimming over you in this weird sort of glass thing. And I'll tell you where that is. And I, I'm not going to put it in the podcast picture title caption. I'm going to tell it to you. And I'm going to tell you what it is now. It's at that Rainforest Cafe. The Tourist Trap Rainforest Cafe in San Francisco. Along the Empire, the, what's that? What Fisherman's Wharf along the Embarcadero. Near Pier 39 and all that stuff. Pier 39 having an anniversary this year. And I did not realize Der Wiener Schnitzel was having an anniversary yesterday. They were doing, well, I guess they were celebrating their 56 year anniversary and they were selling hot dogs for 56 cents yesterday. Along with 7-Eleven doing their free Slurpees. And then they were selling hot dogs for a dollar. So I didn't know about the, you could have just eaten hot dogs all day yesterday i ended up just getting hot dogs at the 7-eleven i never had a hot dog there before and why their condiment section is pretty interesting because you can go underneath you can take your hot dog put it underneath this machine and press a button and it spits out chili on top of it and you press the other button it spits out this nacho cheese jalapeno cheese on it and you can pretty much eat everything synthetic you would ever I had the most synthetic lunch yesterday 
It was crazy. And then I had a horrible headache because of my synthetic lunch. But you know what? We learned from our mistakes. Yesterday was also... Yesterday is the greatest day I've ever known. Yesterday all my problems seemed so far away. And yesterday was also some scrambled eggs. Because that's what the original lyrics were for that song, Scrambled Eggs. But yesterday was a day where the Bay Area smelled like everybody at the exact same moment slammed on their brakes. All at the same moment. It had that brake, burnt brake smell all day yesterday. Well, I from about the time I got home uh, till at least 8 o'clock in, in the evening, I could smell it. It was weird. Everywhere I went in Podcaster Valley, I was also in a little bit of Hayward as well. It had, I don't know what was causing that. I haven't found anything in the news about it yet, so... But that's either here nor there or anywhere. Hey, the shows next week are going to be a little bit shorter. Just want you to know uh, my schedule is changing up quite a bit. So at this moment, it is 5.58. So right at this second, I would usually next week have to wrap up the show. And I've been chit-chatting for maybe five minutes. But next week will be a little bit, the shows will be a little bit shorter. But they'll still be just as awesome. Yeah. Because we're all about being awesome here on Mike's Daily Podcast. Grabbing the football by the horns. Running down the field. Counting to 10. 2, 3, 4. That's about it. Ah, ha, 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 5. Okay. Mike's Daily Podcast.com. Podcast pictures help out the show through the Amazon link. Click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy. And that helps us out. That's also a PayPal as well. You can donate through the PayPal. And you'll become an Inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster. And get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. And a personalized MP3 for thee. And there's all the places you can listen to the show. I mean, you ever heard of Deezer? We're on Deezer. You ever heard of iHeartRadio? We're on that. We're about everywhere on Tumblr, Player.fm, anywhere you can find a freaking podcast, even on YouTube, we can be found. And you can also call me at 336-MM-DAILY if you have any comments, 336-MM-DAILY, or you can email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com, and we'll have all that information again at the end of the show, recited by the lovely Ariel. But let's get to the section of the show called The Micropedia Insanica. Awesome. Burger Master. Oh boy, the White House has been thrust into chaos after days of ever worsening revelations about a meeting between Donald Trump Jr. and a lawyer characterized as representing the Russian government. This according according to the Washington Post. As the president fumes against his enemies and senior aides, they all circling one another with suspicion According to a top White House official and outside advisors, President Trump, who has been hidden from public view since returning last weekend from a divisive international summit, is enraged that the Russia cloud still hangs over his presidency and is exasperated that his eldest son and namesake has become engulfed by it. The disclosure that Trump Jr. met with a Russian attorney believing he would receive incriminating information about Hillary Clinton as part of the Kremlin's effort to boost his father's candidacy has set back the administration's faltering agenda and rattled the senior leadership's team. Even supporters of Trump Jr. who believe he faces no legal repercussions privately acknowledged Tuesday that the story is a public relations disaster for him as well as for the White House. One outside ally called it a Category 5 hurricane, while an outside advisor said a CNN graphic charting connections between the Trump team and Russians resembled the plot of the fictional Netflix series House of Cards. Even Vice President Pence sought to distance himself from the controversy with his spokesman, noting that Trump Jr.'s meeting occurred before Pence joined the ticket. This according to the Washington Post. Meanwhile, the Kremlin has never been in touch with the Russian lawyer, Natalie Ves- Veselnitskaya. 
Vessel knit sky yay. Sky yay. Uh, who met a group of US uh, associates of the president Donald Trump last year. Uh, that according to the Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov today. We have already said we are absolutely unaware of this story. We have never been in contact with this lawyer. She has nothing to do whatsoever with us. Peskov said, probably with an accent, to a conference of reporters. This according to Reuters. We had a story about Reuters yesterday about the possibility that uh, the White House had told... Well, not the possibility, the fact that the White House had suggested to the head of Reuters to... They wanted him to criticize another reporter. So... Listen to the last show to hear more about that. But Trump's eldest son, Donald Trump Jr., eagerly agreed last year to meet a woman he was told was a Russian government lawyer who might have damaging info about Hillary Clinton as part of Moscow's official support for Donald Trump Sr. And that is why... He loves Russia. I say it's better to get along with Russia than not. But either way, he won. I won. I won. He won. Three of the most influential figures in President Trump's inner circle are lobbying the president to oust his chief of staff, Reince Priebus. This also from the Washington Post. Trump's wife, Melania, eldest daughter and senior advisor, Ivanka, and son-in-law and senior advisor, Jared Kushner, have privately pushed him to shake up his West Wing staff, most notably by replacing Priebus. He has served as the chairman of the Republican National Committee before joining Trump's White House. He has, he's been rumored for months to be on his way out of the uh, White House as the president's top assistant. Deputy White House Press Secretary Lindsey Walters flatly denied that Priebus was on the chopping block. Telling the Post that, quote, these sources have been consistently wrong about Reince, and they're still wrong today. According to the Post, Trump is hesitant to do away with Priebus and other senior staffers as his administration faces multiple investigations into possible collusion between his campaign and Moscow. Uh, And the White House... Trump's White House has seen a steady stream of leaks. WikiLeaks! I love WikiLeaks! Stephanie Grisham, Melania Trump's communications director, said to the Post that the First Lady was concerned about the leaks coming from the White House, but rejected the notion that she was pressing her husband to fire Priebus or anyone else. Of course the First Lady is concerned about the leaks from her husband's administration, as all Americans should be, said Grisham. And while she does offer advice and perspectives on many things, Mrs. Trump does not weigh in on the West Wing staff. Then there's Hobby Lobby. I used to go there when I lived in Alabama with my then wife. And we would buy stuff. We bought a lot of stuff from there. Especially Christmas ornaments, which I still have. I got those in in the divorce. Arts... Lucky me. Arts and crafts giant Hobby Lobby was pilloried last week after it agreed to forfeit $1.6 million worth of smuggled Iraqi antiques it bought in 2010 to promote passion for the Bible. Turns out that wasn't the first time the company illegally imported artifacts. An attorney for the retailer confirmed to NBC News that the $3 million it will pay the feds to settle a civil case isn't a fine, but a payment to cover unspecified items that were improperly brought into the U.S. before the 2010 acquisition. Hobby Lobby doesn't have those purchases any longer. A stipulation outlining the settlement said they are uh, dissipated, quote unquote. Suggesting they were either sold or donated. Now, the Hobby Lobby has this weird sort of thing. They're very religious over there. And they took issue, took umbrage with the whole thing um, with uh, Obamacare. And having to supply, uh, what do you call it? Contraception. Mm -hmm. They, They were against the conception. Wait. Against the concept of contraception with the whole Obama thing. They sued against it. The Obamacare. 
Yeah, so that summed that up nicely, didn't I? I summed up that story. Finally, Joe Scarborough. He is leaving the Republican Party. And he's going to be an independent voter now. His announcement was expected to come during the episode of The Late Show with Stephen Colbert yesterday. Scarborough and his Morning Joe co-host Mika Brzezinski have been friendly toward uh, Donald Trump during the 2016 election, but have been increasingly critical of him since his inauguration. The switch prompted Trump to lash out at the pair in a series of tweets, referring to them as Psycho Joe and Low IQ Crazy Mika, and claiming Brzezinski was bleeding badly from a facelift when he saw her last year. The former lawyer was the Republican congressman representing Florida's first district from 1994 to 2001. If you were wondering where Joe Scarborough's fame came from, his bona fides, if you will. And finally, finally, uh, there's a panic going on at Apple because of the iPhone 8. They're working around the clock trying to fix software bugs affecting the next flagship iPhone, possibly called the iPhone 8. I've also heard it called the iPhone X, but they report this according to Fast Company and CNBC mentioned several issues plaguing the new iPhone, which analysts have suggested may face delays. Wireless charging, which would allow users to charge the battery without having to plug the phone in, and problems with a 3D sensor for facial recognition are at hand. The sensor may be used to help users unlock the phone and Samsung includes both wireless charging and support for face unlock on its new Galaxy S8 but Apple hasn't worked with either technology before and Fast Company said that I used to subscribe to that magazine I have some issues laying around the garage they're probably so outdated by now but Fast Company said there's a sense of panic among the team working to build the new iPhone and a fear it might not meet tight deadlines. Apple typically launches new iPhones in September for some reason. But some analysts have suggested that the flagship high-end model might not launch until October or November. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. That is a long ways away. And I know the month of September is going to be a crazy month for me for various things, various issues. I still need to see if I need to go, if I still need, if I still can get to Florida. It's hinging on a bunch of things. I got to get my roommate, see if my roommate's going to be there, my dog, I got to, my dog's got to be watched, uh, walked, fed. And then just the whole buying a ticket that isn't crazy expensive and, you know, all that sort of travel brouhaha. Hey, I hope you didn't take umbrage with today's show. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you, you still don't smell the brake smell that's going around the Bay Area or, or wherever you are. And if you run into a time traveling tourist, tell them, hey, back that bleep up because I know you've got all this technology and understanding of the future and whatnot, but back that up or whatever curse word you use in the future. I don't need you, you damn time traveling tourist, unless it's the doctor. And then I would love to talk to the doctor, Doctor Who. You know, I watched Uh, Four episodes Four old episodes from the 70s When it was a half hour long Of that British TV show With the time traveling doctor And it was wonderful Oh the lousy special effects But the the storyline Was great When you watch the old shows If you're a total Doctor Who fan like me And you watch the old shows The special effects It's understood the special effects are going to suck But you, you get into the whole story and it's fun. It's a fun bit of sci-fi. I like that type of sci-fi. It's wonderful. And I watched several ep- I'll, I'll, I will watch several more. I promise you that. Hey, have a great day. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at Mike's Daily Podcast.
podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.